Hey everybody, this is Space Marine Steve. As said by the shirt, look at the shirt. Put the look at shirt it. away. Why? I have it. Put Let's the shirt it. away. Uh, so I'm Space Marine Steve. I'm joined here at Hyperspace Hobbies with my good friend Ian. And uh, dude, today, the best and the worst. Top five, bottom five. Top five, bottom five. The best and the worst. So the great thing about, I love Goonhammer. So Goonhammer is a phenomenal website that's got all kinds of like articles and they also track stats mm -hmm. and they monitor events. It's a phenomenal 40K like hub of information. Yeah, you can get, you can get all of your good stats. You can figure out which armies are winning and losing. You can adjust your army to, if you know you're going to a major tournament, you can kind of try to wheel your army to counter some of the top mm. performers. Yeah, they're great content creators. It's all text-based, there's no videos. Speaking like of great content creators, please <laughs> like and subscribe. Yes, and throw a comment down in the comments section to appease the great algorithm. The top five surprised me. The top five surprised me too. So they track 40K win rates by faction. Yes. And uh, it's great to kind of know where your faction sits in the grand ecosystem of the game. It's great, but it's not really all that vital. It's not vital, but it does get like, being able to survey the general like environment and know like which ones are winning a lot and which ones need some help. It, it's it's the, they need the math to figure out how to help the factions that need the help, mm -hmm. right? And, and while it might not be the be all end all and you know, a, a really strong player can take an underperforming faction and go to town with it. Yep. And same with that, an inexperienced player might take one of the better factions in the game and still not be able to pilot it the way that, you know, some of the great players do. And that's okay. This is just kind of where everything sits. And it's, uh, you know, it's not really bent on player specific information. But the top five do surprise me too. They do surprise me. And there's some numbers that are a bit skewed yeah. because of um, just the amount of games that are being played. Let's count from, from the five all the way up. So in number five, Space Wolves. Space Wolves. They, I mean, they're an awesome looking army. They have great shirts. Yeah. You know that. Okay. I'm not. I'm not surprised by this. I think Space Wolves have a really good play in the game right now. It's Wolf Jail. It's Wolf Jail. Yeah. And even though there's price um, points adjustments for for uh, Thunder Wolves, I think that that doesn't really hurt them doing no. what they do. So you didn't want to do full Wolf Jail where you have like the advances and the charges and you get all up in there. Uh, they did kind of like curtail a little bit the Stormlast attachment, but even with the core Space Wolves attachment, being able to pick a Saga and have it be pre-done now yes. matters a lot. So that might be helping them a little bit, but ultimately the, the most popular one is Wolf Jail. Yes, uh, the, the being able to choose your Saga at the start is so impactful because you can see what your opponent's doing and a smart player is going to adjust to counter. Yeah. Which is sort of the Space Wolves thing. They're very counter-ish. Yeah. All in all, I, I'm still sort of surprised seeing like where Space Marines fall on the main thing. Like the core book that they use is Space Marines and they're not performing particularly well, but it's nice to see that there's some power armor in the top five. Going up to so, more humans. More humans are everywhere. Aster Militarum. Aster Militarum right there. Number four. They're the, the fourth best top performing army in the game right now. And it, it's interesting. Like I would like even with the changes to indirect, mm -hmm. where you know you, they can't hit on you know better than a four. There's cover everywhere, of course. It, they're still making it happen. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, vehicles spamming a lot of vehicles is is truly awesome in this game, and 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 they have a really good way of just stat checking opponents' armies. Yeah, if you don't have enough anti vehicle, like there's no way to stop it. Like, and and the vehicles can hit really hard, right? Like. Um, uh, Lehman Rust, there, a Lehman Rust is still no joke. If it's whirling around, it's like uh, demolisher cannon and mm -hmm. stuff like that. That is legit. It's yep. very scary, right? And tank commanders, when they die, they have a chance to have a very good chance of shooting again. Yeah, which totally. makes them almost like sacrificial in some ways. You can go, yeah. I'm just gonna, I need to throw this out, shoot at that target. I might not kill it, but when I die, I will. Yeah, absolutely. I have a great chance of on death shooting. Yeah. Well, and, then they, and that gigantic new tank that they have the too. Rogel Dorn. The Rogel Dorn is legit. Yeah, like, it, it shoots like crazy, and so it is many so guns. tough. So many like, so I get it. Like, it, it's really tough vehicles in a ve in a vehicle heavy meta, right? Like, 
it's it's great to see them succeed and without a book too and out of all the armies in the top five they have the most games played at eleven thousand. and they're still keeping a 52 percent win rate 52. after that this now this one really surprised me the numbers are skewed here because there is like so few games played but emperor's children yeah only 500 games played which is very low to get a score but they're batting at a 52 almost a 53 percent win rate i love it love to see this okay. second place you're gonna be just barely now barely behind chaos demons yeah you love it <laughs> i mean chaos demons just have so many avenues in the game to score secondaries even when their army's almost completely beaten with yeah. being able to uppy downy and deep striking three inches yeah those two things combined just totally make them a a constant threat with getting secondaries and getting primaries. Yeah. If you're getting good. a little sloppy on your objectives and I deep strike Nurgle next to you three inches away and I steal your objective, that's such a crippling blow. Like really five is. points yeah. taken away from you and now you have to deal with Nurgle in your front lines. Yeah, that's bad. It they really they're very good at playing the tricky game. They're also like they're tough and they can hit hard sometimes and and there's four up and vulnerable saves like almost across the board. Mm -hmm. Like so I mean combine smart plays with a little bit of luck and a panicking opponent and I can see you stacking up lots of W's instead of L's, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. And their um their firepower in the shooting phase if you kind of wheel towards that is incredibly good and yep. their close combat is always going to be good. It's that's, always going to be good. That's their bread and butter is right. Combat. And it, it is very like greater demon dependent, I yep. think. Like currently, yeah. You know, it currently you really need the greater demons to pull their weight, which I, I think that they do. Like, you know, there's there's very few greater demons I look at and go, man, it's not great. Like all of them have a decent profile. It's something, right? Yep. Whether they're really tough or really fast or they hit really hard or whatever it is. So I'm not surprised, although it disappoints me. Okay. <laughs> like Imperial Knights, it, it, it feels like shouldn't be in this top spot. Now, granted, it is a very narrow, it's it's a very narrow edge into first place, like only by a few, like, point percentage points, yeah. right? Like, it's very, very shallow. But still, they're up there. And from what I've seen online, the, the Imperial Knight lists are actually, like, sort of balancing out like it's not like the sprawling chaos knight war dog list where there's like 13 of them or something silly it's like two or three of the larger knights canis rex is usually in there yeah, canis rex yeah. is a he's, baller he's really strong uh and then like a, a few of the smaller armagers right like um some popular ones are the auto cannon ones the helverins um and, and then there's usually one or two squads of like support troops like they they kind of dig into the imperial agents yep. um to get themselves uh some stuff to help them hold objective score points screen board whatever it is and i think they're here for pretty much the same reason that the Astro Militarum are here, and it's that vehicles are good right now. Vehicle stat check. Vehicle stat check. The other thing is Imperial Knights are naturally very good at fighting Chaos Demons and Astro Militarum because they yeah. have a lot of anti-vehicle. A lot of their guns are very high strength, yeah. high damage. And like with demons, all you need to do is beat a coin flip with the four up in bones, and all of a sudden yeah. you're throwing three damage, three damage, three damage, and yeah. then you've downed something big and you don't have to worry yeah. about it. And anymore. those those Helverins are like would definitely be the bane of those major of those like big demons. Oh, absolutely. Because they're like strength nine, AP one, which doesn't matter because you're rocking four up in balls yep. anyways. Yep. Uh, and then three damage a hit. So every single time you fail one of those saves, it's like three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden your your eighteen wounds doesn't mean much. You only have to yeah, fail exactly, a right? So I can definitely see it. it what it means, it, and I've I've often said that the game is good when there's two factions that that I think influence the game the most, and the first one is Tau, and the second one is Imperial Knights. When the game is usually not great, when one of those two factions is is crushing, is crushing. Yeah. but. But, and and I, I have a lot of like well thought out reasons for that. It's not because I hate the faction. It, it's not because I think it's dumb or whatever. It, it's just how they choose to play the game when that is the one that succeeds the most. It influences everybody else in a way that makes the game in some in, in some ways like kind of unhealthy, right? Like Tau in particular, it's like, oh, like when shooting is all that matters, it means that the close combat armies don't succeed as well. Yeah. And it, you know, there's, a, there's cascading and dominoing effects of reasoning why I think that. But 
they're not crushing. No. They're yeah. barely ahead yeah. of a close combat army. And I think that's the, the big takeaway is that the highest win rate that we have is 53.65%. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not by any means like the 60s or 70s. That's not an auto win. You're still yeah. having to struggle to get that win. Let's, I mean, let's talk about the bottom five. So this is the worst, the worst five in the game. The fifth worst, Imperial Agents. With a 46% win rate. That's not not a bad win. I mean, it's, I mean, it's only eight hundred games, but eight hundred like, games, yeah. yeah. And twenty of them were ties, which is a, no, a that's pretty wild high me, yeah. skew for for that. But uh, but ultimately, a forty six percent win rate. Yeah, I like, mean, Imperial agents are struggling right now. They have a weird kind of army. Um, they have a ton of OC. That's what they do. Yeah, they good. do have a lot of OC. They, have, they, they play have, the missions well. They have movement and they have OC. Like yeah. you can get OC two on pretty much everything. Yeah. You're gonna be ripping around and yeah. in, in all over the board. You also have access to a lot of tools and stuff too that like, you know, you, you don't usually get um, with some of the other, like uh, with some of the other Imperial armies. And it's just, it, it, it I, I'm not surprised to see them down there. But I am surprised to like look at a 46% win rate and go, that's the fifth worst one in the game. Yeah, that's not terrible. That's not horrible, right? Like wait, there there was a time when I go, hey, I have a 46% win rate, thank God. Yeah. Right? Where now that's the fifth worst. So yeah. not, not even not even four percent off of the fifth yeah. percent. They're narrowing the gap. The fourth worst, I'm not particularly surprised, but also it's a 46% 46, win rate, just yeah. slightly lower than Imperial Agents Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about Adeptus Mechanicus. If, if anyone in the comments can throw up about uh, Adeptus Mechanicus and let us know why they're struggling so much. Um, I know that their firepower is pretty good. Maybe they lack in combat and that... Well, they, they aren't great at combat. The robots are like, okay. Is it just a durability problem or... Kind of. Honestly, I think it's a complexity problem. Because uh... you need... It's like, they have a lot of rules that's like... If my unit is close to a battle line unit, it gets a bonus. And then you have to like pre-plan by like loading up all of these different programs and orders at the beginning of your turn to like- It sounds really cool. It is really cool, but playing it right, like programming that all to actually function the way you want it to function. I think there's a, comp I think there's a lot of room for error. Mm. And even in like unintended errors, like I programmed this to do this. I programmed this, I gave these orders or data, whatever it is. And then this thing overperformed and now this thing I planned to happen didn't really happen uh, the way I wanted yeah. to happen. Or like this thing underperformed and now I'm like, oh crap, yeah. right? Um, it's just kind of hard to predict. And then too, like once you start losing your battle line, which are the most squishy, yep. like a lot of your bonuses start going away. You know, unlike other armies that can just go all elite all the time and bring all their firepower, you're forced to get the bonuses you want. You're forced to bring more battle line than most armies do. Right, yeah, and that, right? Might, that might be why they're suffering. Could be. It's hard to say, I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of just taking an uh, like an educated guess. And again, they're not suffering by that. Much. No, it's forty six percent win rate. Is is it great? No. Is it horrible? No. <laughs> now number three. Now this surprised you. This boggles my mind. Orcs. Orcs are the third worst currently in the meta, which which doesn't make any sense to me. I've been loving orcs. I've been playing orcs, and they've been netting me a lot of wins. A lot of like blowout wins too. Like some of them are yeah. turn two tables or turn three handshakes. Like. Um, it's not all the time, but th there's been quite a few cases where the, my orcs have uh, have really throttled up and destroyed my opponent yeah. to a point where it's you know re rack. Yeah, I mean, so it, but the, but I mean in that same vein, like I some of my most recent games that I've played have actually all been against orcs. Like I played you, mm -hmm. beat you. Mm -hmm. I played Kurt, beat Kurt. Yeah. So I it's not impossible. I think Space Marines have a good matchup. Into orcs? Against orcs. Yeah, because yeah. they have a they have a decent amount of uh, firepower too, and then just volume with basic guns, yeah. which I think just kind of yeah. planks away at the orc. Yeah, it does. I mean, there's lots of like it, I'm just saying it's it, while you're you're having, to, but this is also one of those great moments where the per, the the percentage points doesn't always equate to like you know there's player skill in there, mm -hmm. and then there's like all these other factors mm -hmm. that kind of work into it, and like. You know, it's, I, I feel like when really good players get a hold of codexes, they can like bring their win rates up, right? 
And um, the downside to systems like this sometimes is that some of the really, really, really good players immediately navigate to whatever the math says is the best. Right. Right. And they'll do the army hopping thing. And those are the people that do attend events almost weekend after weekend after weekend. Yeah. And they influence the numbers a lot. Oh, it's going to be like uh, you with all the new Eldar. What, as soon as the Eldar comes out, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be hitting, like, event after event, just crushing 360 well, you've, you've Dunking. you've loved the lore forever. I've, since I've loved the lore forever, and the models are so gorgeous, I feel like I need three of whatever's the most broken. <laughs> <laughs> but this also can be a problem because I'm not struggling with orcs, but it looks like orcs are struggling. They just got huge points reductions, sweeping points reductions. Yeah. They might get another sweeping this points reduction. This is width of sweeping points reductions, too. I know, I know. Yeah. They might get another sweeping points reduction, which makes it even harder for my opponents to try to, try to you yeah. know, like, I think for anybody who's playing orcs well now, mm -hmm. you might get another buff in the yeah. near future, which is with, crazy. With that being said, though, I, GW has said... Right now, orcs are actually in the Goldilocks zone. I think they are. Yeah. They they may be, they may be third worst, but they have a forty five percent plus win rate. And GW has like kind of said, we love everything from forty five to fifty five. Yep, that is the band. So you you might not get any more help because forty five percent is kind of where they want you. And once they get a new codex, once a new codex drops, this whole thing goes up in the air because if, yeah. if the new codex would be Imperial Guard oh, yeah. or Eldar, totally. it might change everything. It yeah. might downgrade the index Imperial Guard. Yeah, and give them some other avenues that you know deal with demons better, and then demons yeah. drop. But the it, army over over everybody doesn't perform as well. So it drops demons and it drops itself in a weird way. Yeah, I. Also, the like what other books come out and how that changes the ecosystem could change their win percentages. Like sometimes, like a faction can yo-yo in percentages with nothing even happening to them. Like there was a time where Space Marines were rocking like a fifty-three or fifty-four percent win rate, mm -hmm. and no data sheet had come out. Yep. No other things had happened. It's just other books come out. It changes the win rates and. They sink. Nothing happened to Space Marines. No. Things happened around Space Marines. Yeah. Right? So thinking about that, the second worst faction in the game is Chaos Space Marines. Again, very surprising because yeah. I think Chaos Space Marines are, are fantastic. And yeah. uh, and we know Mike Buns, he's a great player with Chaos Space Marines. He's absolutely rocking it in the, um, the our league. Our league games. Yeah, yeah he's Just doing fantastic. 44% win rate. 44, yeah, seems wild. Yeah, now that is under what GW wants. Yeah, that's under the bar. Right, that's under the bar. Now that's yeah. like just squeaking under the bar, yeah. right? Like, yeah. but it's still under the bar, so I could totally see them getting a little bit of help. Like, But again, this is a case of Mike, our friend, who's a really good player, playing an army that is not particularly doing well in the overall meta, but batting way above average with his wins. Yeah, totally, right. And again, we're gonna look at the, the the dead last space marines. Space marines. It breaks my heart. Are you shocked by that? Are you surprised by that? No, I'm not. Do you and think it's just because of the volume of new players bringing the average for space marines down, or do you really believe that space marines have a 42 percent win? I really believe they have a 42 percent win rate. Mm. And the reason I really believe that, and and people have often said, well, a lot of newer players will play space marines. Yes, that's true but not a ton of newer players play Space Marines and attend like, attend all of these you know, GTs and stuff like that and enough to influence the numbers by that margin, no way. Mm. The math says that they are significantly worse than, than all the other factions in the game. Like 42% mm -hmm. is 8% under the 50% mark. They lose more than the winning factions win and like, I do, I do believe that that is a problem, and yeah. and uh, I what I don't want is I don't want Space Marines to be so good that everybody and their mother plays them because there was times in the game where that actually happened, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they became oppressive and annoying to play against. Where I don't think that's the case right now, but I do think as a Space Marine player, I do have to work just a little bit harder and get a little bit more creative to eke out the wing wins and. Um, Sometimes it's just tough sometimes. Do you think this is a representation of some of the points increases that they just recently got? Could be. With the Harm Assist? Yeah. The, yeah. 
Ugh. It it just sucks because they've never been able to quite dial in. They've they've never been able to quite dial in what actually makes something good. And yeah. like, and and so what happens? They just kind of they hit everything. They're like, ah, we we don't really know what makes this combo amazing, so we're gonna make every single part of it worse. Yeah, like to quite make a bit sure worse. we get it. And you're like, okay, but now you've made it so bad that it's not good anymore, right? Or like, you've, or it's still the thing everyone's gonna take. It's just more way expensive. more expensive now, right? Like, and some stuff's like just unnecessary. Like you know, even though it was, even though it's a silly amount, going from ninety or ninety five points on eradicators to a hundred points. It was unnecessary. No, it's right? a three man unit, not nuts. Not nuts. And so, but what does make it nuts is when you make take six of them and you put the harm assist in there with the fire discipline and you got Calgar in there and they're running around and shooting. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. But that is not what all Space Marines are. So here's the, the second problem is that Space Marines are also like six fact six or seven factions all slammed into one book. And then they also have to have their book like piggybacked onto Dark Angels and Blood Angels and Space Wolves. Yeah. So they have to make sure that it's like toned down enough that those books in its orbit don't make it crazy. Yeah, it's so much harder to make those fine tuned adjustments where yeah. you might tool up something or under power yeah. or something. It's all, it's all very difficult yeah. to do. And uh, the Space Marines have it the worst when it comes to that particular yeah. thing. And that's, and it's always on the edge. That's, that's the thing is like, it's always on the edge because in my opinion, Space Marines are on the brink of being nuts. <laughs> if you were to just like make little adjustments here and there, suddenly it's amazing. Yeah, they can be broken. So how do you feel uh, as a whole? How do you feel the meta looks like right now? I think it looks pretty good. It sucks to see Chaos and Space Marines kind of at the tail end of it. But only two factions outside of the 45 to 55 percent win great. bar. And, and the best part is nothing has a win rate that's like even getting close to the trouble zone, like 60, 50, 56. Yeah. Everything's in the like lower tier of. Yeah. If you're like the top winning faction, you're only top winning by 3%. Yeah, who cares, right? That That is effectively a coin flip. Yeah, easy. Right, so the great thing about this is, it, funny enough, this is the best Games Workshop has ever done to achieve a sense of balance. But I mean, they're, they're like, they're releasing detachments daily. Well, soon, That's yeah. <laughs> they are, yeah. Oh yeah, that is that's happening now. Yeah. Uh, so, and who knows what that does? We don't know. But you know what? I I actually kind of feel like Games Workshop has has picked has has found the groove. And the stuff that they're releasing fingers crossed might not influence the state of things in such a way that it ruins stuff. And if it does, Games Workshop has proven that they're not opposed to quick patches and fixes. Yeah, which is the great part right? of the current edition. Yeah, right? And so, you know what? It's the best it's ever been. Straight up. You heard it here. It's the best it's ever been. It's true. <laughs> Thank you for joining Space Marine Steve and your good friend Ian here at Hyperspace Hobbies. Please like and subscribe.